Hello, guys. Uh, uh, video, not live stream. Hopefully, things are going well for you. And, uh, yeah, let's get right on going for today's video. And, uh, yeah, I got this lovely green screen set up that I normally use for live streams, but I could pretty much use it for both live streams and in videos more often as well, because why not? Let's let's jump into some things. I need to get something to drink for crying out loud. Alright guys, how's it going? And through the intro. This is deja vu all over again, and I, and I had to go work. This is, I'm just losing my mind. I forget, I was supposed to get me a drink as well. Uh, let me go get that ticker now. All right, I'll be right. Okay. Ah, oh. Mountain Dew Black Label. Get me drink on there. I've been wanting to do a break from videos, but unfortunately, I can't get away with such. But anyway, uh, let's get right on going to today's topic. In all seriousness, let's start off the video with a question. All right. So, why is it that we can't have fun in a video game and wind down? I mean, video games are a part of entertainment. So, what do you do? when you come home after a long day and after the days of chores. You want to sit and wind down through some entertainment and have some fun through some entertainment. You want to be entertained. Alright? I and many others have been asking that question due to some situations going on. Now I know there's the predatory practices like the monetizations which you would find in a free-to-play game so there would be a way for the developers have said to free to play game to maintain its existence. Yeah, there's that. But however, you have yourself the random censorship that's been going on caused by the the moral guardianship, the political guardianship and the fun policing. Or basically, to, to put this all up into one big category, the fun policing. Basically, how this fun policing shenanigans work is that, all right, let's say, oh, there, there's somebody that's like, oh my goodness, there, this game does not have real life politics. These games should be political. And you have that going down. No, 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 no. So let, 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 let's, let's take that. I know that happens. I know this happens. But, let's go and take out a more common situation, all right? Like, let's say that there's some person with, with moral superiority sitting around here looking at Senran Kagura like, oh my goodness, look at Senran Kagura, my goodness, the, the revealing outfits, the, the sexual graphic scenes, oh my goodness, this game should be banned. This game should be wiped from existence. The the makers of it should face consequence, and the people buying and enjoying and, and supporting it should face consequences as well. Okay, fine. Uh, say what you want. But then they'll jump to riling up a crowd or sneaking in behind the scenes, whatever. Whatever the heck they're doing. And whatever they're doing, they're having developers and publishers backed into a corner and forced to censor themselves. Oh yes, and to pretty much add to something, there would be, I don't know if it's these same people or not, but all I know is that there's people doing celebratory hot takes 
and just celebrating the audiences of said thing getting alienated being like oh too bad boohoo how about you grow up stop jerking off and and start playing games that are more progressive and and less sexist you should mature anyway why would you go and just rub it in their face on top of that? That's just entirely messed up. And here's another thing. What these people, these fun police, doesn't get. It's, if you don't like it, it wasn't made for you anyway. So don't buy it, just get away from it. But you can't keep other people from enjoying what they want to enjoy because what they're enjoying offends you. How is that any way, shape, or form fair? Okay, now I'm gonna go ahead and show you a bunch of things because this is a wonderful idea and why not? All right, now I'm gonna show to you, I'm gonna go through order of age rating, so you know what about that. Or you know what? Yeah, perfect. Now I'm gonna walk you through four games all right, and I'm gonna show you something. Now this is Sushi Striker I got for fifteen dollars. It was on a huge discount, and because uh, why not? All right. So it was fifty dollars. Now it was fifteen dollars. Now I could use like I can use of like twenty dollars of the money I saved buying it for fifteen dollars to just buy me some sushi and eat sushi alongside playing the game. Why not? All right. So. Sushi Striker. You see this thing in the bottom? That's called an age rating, ladies and gentlemen. Now, if you live in Europe, I forgot the name, but if you live in Japan, it's Sero. Alright? So, I we're, as a person who lives in America, rated E is for everyone, meaning it's for kids. Hip hip hooray. You see the age rating? Look at the back. Oh, look at this. You, you can look at the back of the box for details. You have details on why this game is rated E for everyone, and you see the rating in the bottom below. Okay, perfect. Simple. Okay, now let's get to The World Ends With You. It's uh, from the makers of Kingdom Hearts, and hey, we want people want to take a break from Kingdom Hearts, so let's go ahead and do that. So you have The World Ends With You. This is the final remix edition. So... So you have this. You see on the bottom, it's rated T for Teen. That it is made for teens, ladies and gentlemen. And you will see why. You look at the back of the box, and you see, oh, look. There's the fantasy violence, the mild language, the mild except the suggestive themes. Oh man, this game has suggestive themes. Okay. And SK Heron's Tag Team Frenzy, or basically, uh, I can call it King of Fighters 14 Waifu Battle Royale, because essentially. A lot of the characters until the DLC came in are basically from KOF 14 instead of other SNK titles. But whatever. You see the rating on it? Rated T for Teen. And then you look at the back of the box. Rated T for Teen. Language. Oh, suggestive themes. And you have revealing outfits from left and right. Oh, look at the suggestive themes. Ooh, that can't be good. The suggestive themes. You don't like that? Okay. Well, let's get to the biggest thing. Rumble Roses. It's uh, waifus meets wrestling. Simple. The game is rated M for mature. There's no blood and gore. Why is it rated M for mature? Oh, yes. It's all female wrestling and it's more fan service heavy. So you have rated M for mature sexual themes and violence because you're wrestling. No shit. Anyway, so it's rated up for mature. You look at the box for details, all right? You look at the box. Oh, you look at the back of the box art for origins. Oh, look, there's nudity. I don't like it when I see nude females, okay? It wasn't made for you anyway. Stay the fuck away from it. There's other games. Like, there's other games out there. Sushi Striker. Why not? Here you go. Hip, hip, hooray. Okay, now with that out of the way... I got another question. Why is it that random people, even innocent from left and right, should be punished because people don't have any idea how age ratings work? Now, many people are going to have their arguments around here, all right? 
oh, oh, games were made for kids. Well, guess what? People from all ages were touching on them. And it increased the number in the audience. So, there has to be something for everybody. So that way, the industry can have and maintain bigger numbers in audience. Okay? It's simple. Alright? So as a result, like movies, video games has expanded as a form of entertainment in which as a result, you will see games for kids, but games for teens and games for adults. Alright? And you can't just make one big game to appease multiple demographics like like up to like a thousand no that's impossible it's hardly impossible so how how can we do that now you can make multiple IPs with each unique IP targeting a certain demographic at a time so why was dead or alive made for fighting game fanatics that are in for chaotic fighting gameplay people who are fans of the, the female cast. Okay, perfect. But what was the spin-off series, Dead or Alive Extreme, made for? People who really like the female characters of Dead or Alive, all right, because, yeah, Team Ninja became fully aware of, oh wait, there are people who are fans of the female cast of Dead or Alive. We gotta figure something out. Oh, here we go. And that's how the Dead or Alive Extreme series is born. Serious. Okay, so, yeah. And then you have Dicey Warriors, Hack and Slash Fanatics, War Net Cases, and something wacky, crazy, chaotic fun. Fantastic. Bingo. You, you just want to mindlessly hack away at a bunch of people from left and right in a big war with a giant sword, taking out everybody from left and right. Good. You have Dynasty Warriors. It wasn't made by Team Ninja, but it was made by publisher Koei Tecmo, or no, actually, no. It was published by Koei Tecmo, but made by Omega Force. Now I corrected myself. Saved my behind. But anyway, Dead or Alive was made for mature audiences, where Virtual Fighter doesn't tend to go heavy on the fan service, but focuses on the fighting which is why we would have had to, uh, ugh. I mean, if there was a Virtual Fighter 6, we wouldn't be having to deal with people bitching about Dead or Alive. I mean, get on that, Sega. Because if you kind of compare Dead or Alive and Virtual Fighter, they're like the yin and yang. Dead or Alive's the more chaotic, the more mature, while Virtual Fighter's the more focused on fighting from left and right. So yeah, you, you see the yin and yang just like I did a yin yang comparison with Pokemon and Shin Megami Tensei. So about that, but let's get right back on track. So you have Mario, it was made for all ages from left and right. And then you have Fire Emblem, it was made for older audiences, the teenage audiences. Okay, perfect. And then you have Bayonetta, made for the mature audiences, the adults. Perfect. That's how it works. They make multiple IPs to appease certain demographics small at a time. Okay? So with that said, not everything is made for everybody. Not everything is made for you. Not everything is made for me. And not everything. Okay? Done. Simple. End of story. You can keep it up with the shenanigans for the sake of your moral or political superiority or your moral or political crusades or whatever. I mean, keep going with it. All actions, even innocent, can carry consequences as well, and you're not going to get the same consequence throughout. But, however, you're going to get that small percent chance that's going to happen. But anyway, with that said, if you keep, if people keep going and jumping to the these little moral political crusades to get things censored from left and right, if people keep going, then it's going to become overwhelming for uh, these people. When you get another auto de fa, or uh, in English, another enlightenment. 
Now, if you don't know what that is, the Enlightenment happened, like, way long time ago, and boy, oh boy, people got censorship happy, they wanted to show off their religious superiority, but however, they, they, they went on their little religious crusades to just get things censored from left to right and get things adjusted to, to apply to their, to their religious needs. But unfortunately, these people got ripped a new asshole when the Enlightenment happened, and now everybody's like, fuck you, I get to say whatever the hell I want, you can sit down and cry in a corner, or you can just burn me in a cross, because there'll be another person like me. You can be a later, all right. Now, let's fast forward to now, and if that other, if the second enlightenment were to happen, these, you're going to be overwhelmed if you're way, if you want to be the fun police, you're going to be super overwhelmed about the stuff you have to crusade to get censored from left and right. You're going to be overwhelmed, and you're not going to have any other choice but to sit around here and just cry in a corner. So when that second enlightenment comes in, you're not going to like it. If you're a if you're a fun police guy, so or or a hall monitor, I mean, serious. The moral of the story: we're not in high school anymore, so you can stop playing hall monitor now. And also, let people enjoy what they want to enjoy. You do you, I do I, uh, the others do the others. And with that said. Let's all just enjoy things from left and right. Please, for crying out loud, let's stop this moral guardian fun police nonsense. This doesn't need to happen. Because when you do something like that, you choke out creative freedom. And when you get creative freedom crippled, the entertainment industry that survives off of creative freedom faces worse hits than ever. Okay, that's gonna do it for this video. That is all, and I will be looking forward to you in the next video. Anyway, peace out, ladies and gentlemen, and don't worry, I'll get better lighting pretty soon. And... Alright, later!